everyone! Welcome back to our channel and welcome sa ating first ever episode of 21st Century Literature from the Philippines and the World. This is Tilma Maika and for this video, we're going to talk about the literary periods of Philippine literature. Let's start! Pre-colonial, Spanish, American, Japanese, and contemporary periods. Ito yung mga pag-uusapan natin for today. But before we start discussing what happened dun sa literature ng mga panahon na yun sa Pilipinas, let us first talk about our subject. So first, it's called 21st century. Pag sinabi nating century, class, ang ibig sabihin nun ay 100 years. So ito yung 21st na 100 years or century natin dito sa mundo. Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi nating 21st First century, it begins January 1st, 2001, hanggang December 31, 2100. Ito yung kasalukuyang panahon. The time that we are living right now. Mula nung 2001 hanggang 2100. So, ibig sabihin, tayong mga nabubuhay ngayon, tayo ang mga nilalang sa panahon ng 21st century. But our subject is 21st century literature. So now let's talk about literature. Ano bang literature? Literature comes from the Latin word litera, which means letter. Traditionally, pinaniniwalaan natin na ang literature ay uh, kwento o tula o kanta o epic. Okay, so those are examples of literature. But since now that literature is being defined as anything with letters, ibig sabihin kahit yung balat ng candy may be considered literature. Bakit? Kasi may letra siya. Now, ganun lang ba yun? Dahil lang may letter, okay na yun. Part na siya ng literature natin. Class, the aim of literature is to parang give a reflection of the lives of the people during that particular period or era na pag-aaralan natin mamaya. Ibig sabihin, sa pamamagitan ng literature, makikita mo kung anong klaseng buhay meron yung mga tao nung panahon na yun. For example, yun yung balat ng candy. Yung balat ng candy natin ngayon ay iba sa itsura ng balat ng candy nung panahon ng mga Espanyol. So, kahit sabihin mong simpleng balat lang ng candy yun, makikita mo yung life nung mga tao sa period na yun. And that is the role of literature. It keeps a record of our lives, of our beliefs, of our culture and traditions. And that is why ang balat ng candy may be considered literature. Now, aside from letters, anything with pictures and symbols may also be considered part of literature. So, yung mga nakikita nating signage sa kalsada or even online, these things may be considered part of literature. So, ibig sabihin, ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon ay yung mga modern na literature o yung mga nasulat mula noong 2001 and up to the present. So, lahat ng sinulat ng mga tao mapakanta man yan, o mapatula, o mapakwento, yun yung mga bagay na pag-aaralan natin sa subject na to. But before we start discussing the present, of course, we have to go back to our Kaya talagang mahalaga ang history, no? Kasi history somehow tells us, no, not somehow, history definitely tells us where we should go. Kasi parang it serves as our guide. And for today, again, we're going to discuss the literary periods in the Philippines. Let's begin with the pre-colonial era. This is considered the longest era ng Philippine literature and it happened before the coming of the Spaniards. Now, initially, everyone believed na ang ng literature sa Pilipinas ay nagsimula lang nung dumating ang mga Espanyol. Of course, that is not true. Now, that was proven by the discovery of a skull cap and a portion of a jaw in Tabon Cave in 1962 in Palawan. So, nung nakita nila yun, na-prove nila na, ah, okay, so, uh, may mga tao talaga na nabuhay before the coming of the Spaniards. Now, of course, um, the Philippine literature, pre-colonial era, is defined or classified by oral literature, definitely. So, ito yung mga kwento at mga tula at mga awitin na naipapasa-pasa natin by word of mouth. Okay, so orally yung pagpapasa natin from generation to generation. And these are composed of myths, of folk tales, of fables, and the like. Kung hindi tayo nasahop ng mga Espanyol, supposedly, we ha should have had our own um, way of writing, or writing system. 
dapat ganun yung sulat natin eh, di ba? Kung hindi tayo nasakop ng mga Espanyol and we weren't introduced to the Roman alphabet. Roman alphabet is what we're using right now, yung A, B, C, D, E. Pero dahil nga dumating yung mga Espanyol and they made us believe that everything that we did before are works of the devil, devilish, demonic, Dahil nga, di ba dati, yung mga Pilipino ang sinasamba nila mga puno, yung araw, kaya meron tayong mga gods and goddesses in Philippine literature. We have dakila and bakiling and the like. Uh, pinaniwala tayo ng mga Espanyol na, no, that is demonic. That is not right. Uh, you should believe in this faith and that is Christianity. Kaya kumalat ang paniniwala sa Pilipinas na there is only one God and we have the Holy Trinity. But before the coming of the Spaniards, wala tayong ganun. So, pinaniwala nila tayo na everything that we did, everything that we believed in are works of the devil. And so, the Filipinos believed in them at lahat ng literature before ay sinunog nila. So, yung mga sinulat natin ng mga kwento, yung mga na i-compose nating mga songs or mga poems or mga epics or fables, lahat yun ay sinunog. Others were um, perish na lang. Nag-perish na lang, sila, uh, na lang sila on their own kasi sila ay nakasulat for example, sa barks of trees or sa leaves and these things, of course, they perish easily. Kaya nawala na rin sila. So, sayang no? Sayang. Now, for pre-colonial poetry, we have proverbs. Ang proverbs ay expressions of wisdom based on common and real-life experiences. An example is this, Bago mo sabihin at gawin, makapitong iisipin. So, kaya yung kung di uhol, di bubuhol. So, that's an example of a proverb. Another is tanaga. Kay tanaga is a poem in quatrain with seven syllables and monorhine. For example, itong kaibigan by Emilita Perez Baez. Palay siyang matino nang humanga yung ko, ngunit muling tumayo, nagkabunga ng gin. Another is folk song or a lyrical expression created according to region like sit 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 and bahay kubo. We also have riddles, a mystifying question, and or a mind puzzle, mga bugtong, ayan, intended to be solved. For example, isang balong malalim, punong-puno ng patalim. Sagot? Bibig. Okay. Another example is, dalawa kong kahon, buksan, walang ugong. Ang sagot ay... Mata. And finally, we have the epic. An epic is also a story, of course, but it is a long narrative poem. So it is a narrative written in poetry. Kwento siya, pero patula. And it should be about a hero with supernatural powers and super pets. Dapat yung, yung sidekick niya ay mga hayop na may superpowers din para makonsider siya na isang epic hero. Um, one of the best examples of this is Biag Nilamang or Buhay Nilamang. Now, for prose narrative, we have myth or stories of gods and goddesses. We have fables or stories intended to teach human values with animals as major characters attributing human quality. So, marami tayong sikat na mga fables or pabula at alam kong you're very familiar with them. We also have legends or mga alamat, a story explaining origins of matter. Saan nagmula? Saan nagmula ang bundok? Saan nagmula ang araw? Saan nagmula ang um, saging, ayan. So, alamat ng saging, alamat ng tosino, alamat ng kikiam. Next is folktale, a fictional story told by ancient group of people. So, ito mga kwentong bayan. At this point, let us discuss the Spanish colonial era. This is from 1565 to 1898. We were colonized for 333 years by the Spaniards. And yung haba ng panahon na yun, just imagine, di ba? Ang pinag-uusapan natin kanina, 21st century lang. Ito nakatatlong centuries na nasakop tayo ng mga Espanyol. Kaya naman, masasabi talaga natin that they have um, impacted us so much, like to the roots, talagang sobrang laki ng effect ng mga Espanyol sa atin. And um, of course, in literature, since that is our focus, dahil literature ang subject natin, marami ring changes na ginawa ang mga Espanyol. Initially, again, is the writing system. So ngayon, nagsusulat na tayo in Roman alphabet. That is because of the Spaniards. Now, as I have mentioned earlier, yung mga Espanyol ang naging strategy nila para makuha yung mga Pilipino at masakap yung mga Pilipino noon ay by making us believe that everything na pinaniniwalaan natin ay devilish. So, pinasok nila ang Christianity and so you could just simply conclude na ang topics ng literature natin nung panahon ng mga Espanyol initially were about um, religion. In fact, the very first book that was published in the Philippines was the Doctrina Christiana, which is a collection of prayers and songs. So initially, 
Filipinos wrote about religion until such time na dumating ang period of enlightenment from 1872 onwards. Ano to? From the word enlightenment, ito yung panahon na naliwanagan yung isip ng mga Pilipino at na-realize nila na, teka, hindi ba pwedeng kami naman yung mamuno sa sarili naming bansa? Kailangan ba talaga na sinasahop kami ng iba? So with that kind of thinking, and this came from the Ilustrados or the Filipinos who managed to um, study in Europe, yung mga medyo middle class to upper class Filipinos, we call them the Ilustrados, na again, nakapag-aral sa Europe and they started the propaganda movement. These are, of course, Jose Rizal, Marcelo H. Del Pinar, Graciano Lopez Haina, and so much more people na hanggang ngayon ay pinag-aaralan natin as our national heroes. Now, let's start discussing their works, their contributions to the Philippine literature. First is Graciano Lopez Haina. He is the writer of Fray Botod. Fray means praile, and botod refers to malaki ang chan, botchok, which means, parang sinasabi niya na, Korok, yung mga praile nung panahon na yun. He is also the editor of La Solidaridad, a newspaper that seeks solution in both political and social issues in a democratic way. The second is Marcelo H. Del Pilar. He is the founder of Jariong Tagalog, known to be the master of Tagalog language. And he joined other propagandists in 1888 and wrote pamphlets ridiculing the administration of the priors. Third is Francisco Baltazar, our very own Balagtas, okay? Writer of Florante at Laura, in which his description of the setting of Albania reflected the tyranny of the Spaniards. So, pag inisip mo yung Florante at Laura, parang love story lang siya, di ba? Pero actually, yung Albania ay um, description din of the tyranny of the Spaniard. Fourth is our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. He wrote the novels Noli Metangere, which means Touch Me Not or Wag Mo Akong Salingin. And El Filibusterismo, or The Traitor. He also wrote Mi Ultimo Adios, Sobre la Indolentia de los Filipinos and Filipinas Dentro de Cien Años. Ito yung mga sinulat na literary pieces ng Dr. Jose Rizal na talagang nagkaroon ng napakalaking impact sa mga Pilipino because this really awakened their spirits and made them believe that it's about time na tayo ay tumaba. Fifth is Andres Bonifacio. He is the father of Katipunan and the writer of Pag-ibig sa Tinubuang Lupa. So, syempre, si Andres Bonifacio isa yan sa mga pinakamahal din nating mga national hero. We also have Emilio Jacinto, the brains of Katipunan, and he wrote political essays using folk language. That's about it for the Spanish era. Now, let's have the American colonization era. 